Hey everyone, my name is Danielle, and today in the shack, we're going to show you how to 3D print using Repetiejos and Machina printers. In the shack, we use Machina printers made here in Edmonton. They operate by using a hard plastic filament, which they extrude through a hot end, much like a hot glue gun. And then with really thin layers, they build up one at a time until they've created an object. This is a selection of filaments we have in the shack. They come in multiple different colors and different types of plastic. The different types are ABS, NGEN, and PLA. PLA is the most commonly used because it requires the lowest temperature and it's the easiest for us to work with. NGEN's a little bit higher temperatures, a little bit harder, and then ABS is the hardest and the highest temperature. So the next question is, is how does the computer communicate with the printer and tell it where to go and what to do? We use a third-party program that is called Repetier Host that communicates to the printer using a USB connection. I'm just gonna do a really quick interface introduction for Repetier Host. There's a couple of important features on here on the main screen. So the disconnect and connect button to decide what printer you want to connect to. Uh, the next is sort of the control panel for the object. Here you can copy, scale, etc. And then to delete the object, you hit that button there. So under manual control, you can change the bed position manually through XYZ positioning. There's also an XYZ home and a home for all three positions. That's always where it starts out. This is the Z height, so bed height, up or down. Here we have extruding. You can extrude fast or slow at the bottom or up to retract. And we have where you can see your bed and extruder temperatures. And you can set those differently there. And then to turn them on or off, you hit these buttons. So you've got your object made, so what now? Well, open Repetier Host, open up your USB drive. Super simple, we're just going to drag and drop. Notice that there's two different types of files here. One's the inventor file, one's our STL file. You want to drag and drop that STL file. When you bring it in, the object placement screen will come up and you can manipulate your view through the control panel on the left by rotating and panning and so on. Also notice the size of this object. It's pretty small. I can tell it's less than one centimeter square because of the grid on the bed. Those grids represent one centimeter across in the length. So I'm going to go ahead and scale this object. Up here there's a control panel for object manipulation and we can go ahead and scale this by 10 at least. I could also lock the scaling factor so I can scale XYZ separately but usually you want to keep it locked so that it scales evenly. My object is now more reasonably sized. I can tell if I switch it around here and line it up to the grid that it's about two and a half centimeters, which is not too bad. That's a good size. The next thing I'm going to consider is the object rotation and orientation. So the way I'm going to print it, if I printed it like this, it would require a ton of support structures to build that. And so I want to put on this flat end here. I want that flat end to be down because that will allow me to print that bridge without any support structures. So go ahead and do an object rotation, lay it flat. If I completely messed up that rotation, I could go ahead and reset rotation. Um, there's also an option to lay flat for when you have uh, odd shaped objects. You can hit that lay flat button and it usually does a pretty good job. There are some other important options in this control panel here. One of them is the copy objects. So if you want multiple of the same thing, you just hit copy. You can ask it to make five. Now we have six. And if you want to just go ahead and delete those because you don't actually want six, hit this delete button for each object. Uh, you can also ask it to center the object on that panel. So there's a grid layout and there is also a center object. And that'll put it back in the center. If needed, you can also mirror your object. I think our object is ready to create the G code now. So we're going to go to Slicer. This is how we create it. Uh, it slices it literally uh, into different layers and patterns. So we're going to make sure our settings are right. We got a 20% density there. We're using the right nozzle type. And this is an important one. This is our bed and PLA extrusion settings. Those are temperatures on there. Now we just hit slice with slicer. Uh, something I'll mention right now, there's different modes of slicing, different programs you can use. We're using something called slicer, but there's also Cura Engine, for instance, that could be used on our computers. Once it's done slicing, it'll bring you up to print preview screen. Uh, this is where we can sort of check out 
how it did the slicing. Did it do a good job? Sometimes I can miss it. Uh, it also shows us the time, layer count, total lines, filament needed. Here we can scan through the layers individually, going through layer by layer, one at a time. And that gives us a good idea of what it will look like. So before you hit play, you need to check a few things on the printer. The first is that it's, if it's actually on. So see here, no light means it's off. Turn it on, light, therefore it's on. Uh, the next is if your filament's the right stuff. So first of all, this is not enough filament to do a, any print. Uh, it's also maybe not the color I want, so I can change that out. The last thing you want to check is if the bed is clear. So right now there's no object on the bed, but it could be likely that someone had their print still on there. You can't print if there's something there. Also, make sure that bed is clear. You want to make sure there's no leftover plastic on it or that it's not very dirty. If it is very dirty, you need to scrape it off or run it underwater to clean it. This is where the filament is fed into the nozzle way down at the bottom there. You can see the blue portion here. That hot end gets up to 200 degrees Celsius or more depending on the filament you're using. And the bed is where it builds up the object. If you need to change out the filament, you need to go into manual control, then click on the extruder so it will preheat. So now that the nozzle is fully heated, we're going to go ahead and remove it. We do that by hitting this latch, pop, and then gently tugging on the filament. Then to completely pull the filament roll out, we come down here and tidily remove this so that we don't get it all tangled. Unscrew this. Put this like so. So it stays neat and bring in the roll of filament we want to use. This gets fed back up the tube. Where it comes out the top. Here we have to feed it through a few tricky steps. One of them being through here. And the next one underneath at this tube. So see how it's missing? There we go. And now we're going to feed it through until we feel it squish out the bottom. And it won't be until it's coming out the bottom that we know it's actually feeding through well. And as we can see, there is green filament coming out the bottom. Therefore, we got it right. So now we're just going to close the latch, just like so. And we're all done. So now in Repetier Host, I go into Print Preview. And I just can double check that my manual control shows that my bed is preheated, which it is. So now I hit Print. And it'll take a second because it will go to home. It automatically resets to home every time it starts a print. So that's what it's doing right now. And then once it's ready to go, this timer will start to count to down and it'll show positioning as it is now. So here we have it creating an exterior perimeter which it will always do before it starts the actual print. And then it'll eventually start to print the actual object. Here's our final product all ready to go. All I did was pop it off the bed after the glass cooled to a good temperature. Thanks for watching the 3D printing tutorial with the shack and it's shack out.